Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get up and running with Unity for creating games and for coding object-oriented projects using C Sharp. If you're brand new to coding and game design in general, it's my hope that you'll be able to find yourself around Unity and start putting your first project together after watching this video. If you're an experienced developer new to Unity, you should be able to get started coding right away after I help you get oriented to Unity. As always with my videos, it's best to follow along on your own computer, pausing and rewinding when necessary. I do keep the pace up in order to cover so much information. Unity is available for Mac, Windows, Linux, and a number of other platforms. You can visit the link on my screen if you'd like to see all of the platforms that you can use Unity on. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you've already gone to unity3d.com, which is where I am right now on my screen, that you've downloaded the program for your operating system and have it installed. It's also a good idea to install any recommended libraries that Unity suggests during the installation process. You'll also need an IDE like MonoDevelop or Visual Studio. I believe Unity prompts you to install Video Studio at some point during the installation process, so that's a good idea if you're unsure of which IDE you'd like to use. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look. So as you can see, I have Unity open on my computer and although I could open up one of these pre-existing projects that I've already worked on, I'm just going to click on the new button up here at the top to create a brand new project from scratch. In the window that appears, I can specify some of the details about my project. I'll just call it test project. And then over here in the template section, we could choose 3D or 2D. It actually doesn't really matter because we can change this preference at any time really, really easily as we're working on our project. So we'll just choose 3D for now. And then you can choose the location on the computer that you'd like to store this project. This is where all of the project's files are going to be. So make sure it's in a good place. You can see I have mine in a folder here on my desktop. Um, don't worry about adding any asset packages for now. We can always do that later. And uh, so when we're ready, we can just hit create project. So here we are in Unity. Let's take a look around the user interface a bit, and as we do so, we'll start using Unity tools to create a simple project. First of all, there are many different layouts that you can use when working in Unity. The one that we see right now is the default layout, where up here at the top left, we have three tabs. We have the Scene tab, the Game tab, and the Asset Store tab. The Scene tab is where we are now, what we see down here in this box. And this is where we'll be placing objects here in Unity. They're known as game objects. We'll be placing them into our project so that we can interact and script them. Then the next tab over is the Game tab. This is where we will be debugging and testing our game. And then we also have the Unity Asset Store, where we can buy all sorts of assets for our projects. I'm not going to wait for that to load up right now. Just go back to Scene here. Now I do want to mention that you can drag these windows around. So I could take this game window and I could bring it out here and I could uh, say put it next to my scene window. So then I can look at my scene and I can look at my game window and you'll notice that they do look a bit different. Our perspective is a bit different and everything. Um, I could alternatively I could have brought the game window down at the bottom. So we've got the top bottom split screen. I could even uh, you know put it in a completely different area over here. Uh, when I do go to debug my game with this button up here at the top when I go to test my game. Uh, if I don't have the game window open, it will open it for me automatically. So you are safe just looking at the scene view here. The ability to move windows around like I just showed you goes for any of these windows here in Unity. So I could move the hierarchy anywhere I want. I could just add the hierarchy as another tab up here at the top. So now I've got four tabs. I can bring it back out. And of course, we're going to talk about what the hierarchy is, but I just do want to show you that you can move around everything here in Unity. I also want to show you that where we were just up here at the top, uh, underneath those three tabs, we have this 2D option. This is how we can quickly switch back from 2D mode to 3D mode. See, I told you it was easy. So the selection that we made for the template when we created the project doesn't really matter. This is, this is really how we can change whether we're viewing in 2D or 3D. Now let's move our focus over to the right. In this window right here, we're looking at our hierarchy, which will serve as a list view of all of the game objects in our Unity project. As you can see, by default, a new project comes with two game objects, a main camera and a directional light. Without these two objects, both a light and a camera, 
game view would just appear as pitch black nothingness. And as you can see with our camera preview down here at the bottom, it's not. We can actually see the, the skyline, the horizon. That's because we do have a skybox already added here in Unity. If I click on one of these game objects that's already in our project, notice that some information regarding that object appears to the right in the inspector window. This is where we can modify the properties of our objects and components here in Unity. Notice that with the main camera game object selected right here in the hierarchy view, I can see that this particular object has three components attached to it, the transform component, the camera component, and the audio listener component. The transform component is a component that every object in Unity has, even if it's just a placeholder object. The transform component essentially tells us where the object is located in our scene. We also have the camera component, as I mentioned, uh, makes sense, it's a camera object, and um, we're not going to talk about the audio listener component in this video. Notice that you can also click on the add component button down here at the bottom. And as you can see, there are a number of different options in here, and you can kind of scroll through, you'll notice that we have some different physics components we could add, so that would be like a rigid body so that you could actually interact with gravity. Uh, we could add meshes, effects, all sorts of things. Uh, so you can play around with some of these different components if you'd like, but if you're brand new to coding, I think it's probably best to discover a lot of these components by following tutorials and searching for information on them when needed, because you can add some components and you might not actually see how it's affecting your, your scene and your game, and then you might go ahead and create some more stuff in your game, and then all of a sudden you run into an issue later on and you say, why is this happening? Well, it's because you added this weird component when you were playing around in the beginning. So you do want to be a little bit careful, which is why I do recommend following some other tutorials that kind of show you how to use the different components there. For now, let's move our focus to the bottom of our screen. I want to talk about these two tabs down here at the bottom. The first one is the console tab. Uh, both of these tabs are very important. The console tab is where we will see any errors related to our builds and where we can use Mono Behavior's built-in debug.log method to write debugging information to, which I will show you how to do in this video. The second tab is the project tab. And this is where all of the game files, such as scripts, prefabs, materials, textures, and animations are stored on our computer. And it's located at the file path that we specified when we created the project. Notice that I have the asset folder selected, assets, and with that folder selected we already have one folder created in here for us, and that's the scenes folder. Inside of it we have our default scene called sample scene. This is the scene that we're looking at here in the scene view up at the top, and also if we clicked on the game tab, if we click on the game tab, this is still the sample scene. We're looking at this one scene. Unity projects often consist of many scenes, but they don't have to. You can create a fully functional game with just one scene. So if you're new, I wouldn't worry about creating extras just yet. I do, however, have something that you should be worrying about, and that is how to organize all of the game files related to your project. So let's create a few folders to help us do that. I'm going to click back in the Assets folder. And then I'm just going to right click in this area here and I'll get a list with some different options. So you can see there's quite a few different options here, but I'm just going to go up to the top to create and then I'm going to choose the first option folder. Let's name this folder scripts. You can name it anything that you'd like, but scripts is generally considered the industry standard. Uh, this will be one of the most important folders in our project. It's where we will keep all of our C sharp scripts. Also in the Assets folder, it's a good idea to create a folder called Prefabs. You'll probably use that at some point later on. You can also create one called Materials. You can also create one called Textures. And then we'll create one called Sounds. This of course is up to you, you're the developer, and as you get going on your project, you'll probably need to create more folders specific to your situation, but this is a good place to start. Okay, great. So now that we've taken a look around Unity, let's add some items to our scene and write a simple script for them. To add a new object in the scene, I can just go up here to the hierarchy and I can right click, and I can go up here to this bottom part of the dropdown and I can add any of these objects, 
or I could go up to the main menu here to game object and I could add objects up here. So I could go to 3D object. I'm just going to add a plane to our scene. As you can see, the plane now appears in my scene view. I can modify some of the physical properties of the plane using the different selectors up here on the top left. So the one that I have currently selected will allow me to move the plane around in the scene. Go along the y-axis, or I could just actually click where I can hold it and I could move it anywhere that I'd like. Notice that as you move it around, if you look over here to the right, its position in the inspector changes. Negative 3.57 for the x value, 1.58 for the x value there. The hand selector up here at the top simply allows you as the developer to move around in the scene. So left clicking, I can move myself around. Right clicking, I can change my rotation. So if we need to move some over here, we can just kind of do one of these thingies and move around. So that's all that this hand one is for. I just showed you what the moving one is for. This is how we can move it along the different axes. The third option is for rotating the object. The fourth selector is for object scale. That's this one right here. The fifth selector deals with position and scale. And then the uh, sixth selector deals with position and rotation. So I could rotate along these axes as well. Remember, you can also use the inspector window to adjust these properties. So if I go up here and I change, say, the x position to 50 or 5 even, you'll notice it's moving. And then 50, it's actually moved off my screen now. So I'm actually just going to uh, move this back. But I think uh, to do that, I want to talk to you something that's important to do when you're developing here in Unity is you can often lose an object or even when you create a new object, it's good to make sure that it's zeroed out in world space so that it's at its zero, zero, zero location along the X, Y, and Z axes. So there's a couple ways to do that. One, you could just go into the X, Y, and Z up here in the inspector window and put zero, zero, zero. So we now have this object zeroed out, but let's move it back over here. 50. The other thing that we could do is we could also right click on the transform component and click on reset and it will bring it back to the 000 world point for that object. I do want to just quickly mention, uh, make sure that we're all on the same page here in Unity. Uh, when we move things to the left and the right, we are moving them along the x axis, right? When we move things forward and back, we're moving along the z axis. Okay, and then when you move things up and down, you're moving along the y axis. So I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page with that because that can be confusing if you get the z and the y messed up here in Unity. So now we have this plane in our scene. Uh, and if we hit the play button up here at the top, you'll notice that it's going to take us into game mode and we see our plane. But nothing's really happening. We're just looking at our plane. That's it. While we're here in game view, you can actually set the resolution that you are looking at up here in the top drop down. So I definitely want to choose the resolution that I am primarily developing for. Uh, and that way I can actually see uh, specifically what my game is going to look like for that resolution. Uh, and that will also change how it looks when you go back to the scene view. So make sure that you choose the resolution that you'd like. Uh, and you can scale your game in and out, but know that it's going to look more like the 1x scale in terms of like the pixelation of graphics and that sort of thing. But all we're doing is looking at our plane, which is kind of boring. So I'm just going to stop this test and it'll take us back into the main Unity window. In order to show a UI element in this video and to show you some scripting, we are going to give this plane a material and a color. And then we're going to create a button and write a script that will enable and disable the renderer on our plane, meaning that we can change its color or display and hide its color simply by clicking the button. So that's where we're going here, just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, but we need to do a couple things to achieve that. So first of all, we need to add a color to our plane. To add a color to our plane, we need to create a new material. So uh, that actually shouldn't be too difficult for us because we've already created a materials folder in our assets folder. So let's go into our materials folder, double click, and we'll, we will create a new material because by default, the only material in Unity is this white material. So we need to create a new one to get a different color. So I'm going to right click in the materials folder. I'm going to go to create and I'm going to choose material. I'll just call this material blue. We'll do lowercase there, blue material and hit enter. And it's not blue yet, it's white. So with this material selected, 
I see all of its information over here in the inspector window. And I can go up to this just main area where you see this little white box and I can click on it and you don't see it because it opened up on my other monitor, but I'll move it over. Here we go. This color panel opens up and I can select a blue color. Okay, so you can see that the blue material down here changes. We'll close this color box that pops up and we'll click on our blue material and we'll drag it onto our plane and look at that. Our plane is now blue. If we click on the plane, we can see that over here in the inspector, in the shader section, we can see that the blue material is now attached as the shader of this object. Uh, the component, the shader, is actually part of the mesh renderer component, which we'll be referencing in our C Sharp script. So that's this component right here, it says mesh renderer. Material, the shader, just, just sits on top of that mesh renderer. Okay, great. Uh, we're almost ready to create a script for this project, but we first need some UI elements so that we can interact with our script. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here into the hierarchy. And oh, while I'm doing this, I want to mention it's always a good idea to be saving all the time in Unity, guys. Remember that. Command S, Control S, depending on your system. File, save. Save your project. You don't want to lose it. Okay, so we're going to create a button. So we moved over here. We're in the hierarchy window. And I'm just going to right-click and I'm going to go down here to UI. And you can see we have all these different user interface elements that we can add here in Unity. When creating a user interface, it's almost always a good idea to create everything under a user interface canvas first. So I'm just going to choose canvas. So you'll notice that now in my hierarchy view, I have this canvas object in my project. And if I double click on canvas, it takes me to this just kind of white outline floating in space. It doesn't really matter where this UI canvas is located in our scene, because if I have it selected and I look over here to the right, you'll notice that the render mode is set to screen space overlay. So regardless of where we see the canvas, the user is going to see the canvas overlaid over their screen. So we don't really have to worry about where it's located in our scene view or anything like that. It's going to be uh, essentially invisible when you're actually in the game world, except it's going to be overlaid over the screen, right? So we'll see that in a minute here. But in order to interact with our canvas and our user interface, uh, we need to create another UI object. So we are actually going to create a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now have canvas selected in my hierarchy. And I'm going to right click on canvas and I'm going to go to UI and I'm going to go to button. Now I want you to notice that in my hierarchy, button was now created as a child of canvas, which means its zero position, its world point zero zero zero, is now relative to canvas. So it isn't going to go to my zero 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 world point where all my objects right now are being created in my world. It's going to go to zero 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 of this canvas. You'll notice if I move it, you know, out of the canvas, and then I go up here. And I just, I'll just do a right click and I'll reset, boom, it moves to the back middle of the canvas. So I uh, do understand how you know, child objects work in that sense. So great, we've got this button on our user interface. Now I could click on this button, I could click on the drop down, I could change the text, and I could you know, say click here if I'd like. Again, always looking in the inspector for the object properties. I also want to mention, I'm not doing it right now, but it is a really good idea to be naming your objects as you create them. Um, so, you know, I could call, oops, the canvas is fine. I could call the plane, I could call it, you know, blue plane. So I know that that's the one I'm talking about. I could go to this button and I could call this, you know, color button. So, you know, you definitely want to be naming your objects as you create them. I just haven't been because I'm just trying to show you all this information, but uh, definitely remember to do that. Now, okay, so we've got our user interface. We have a button on our user interface. So now if we click the play button up here at the top, you'll notice that we see our plane and we see our button and we click it, but nothing happens. Even though it's telling us to click, nothing's happening. Okay, so we've made some progress, but we're still not doing anything yet. I'm gonna close out of this for now. So it's finally time to create our script. So let's move down here to our project view and click on assets and move into the scripts folder. To create a script, we're going to right click in the scripts folder, we're going to go to create and we're going to choose C sharp script. Now naming is really important for your scripts. So you definitely uh, want to give this a descriptive name, it needs to start with a capital, you should be doing a capital letter for each word, you know, in your script name. So I'm going to call this my color script. So I'm going to call it my with a capital M color 
script, noticing that I capitalized color and capitalized script. Uh, you, you, you need to have that first capital. That is needed sometimes to compile, depending on which libraries you're using and stuff. But uh, you also, it's very good practice to capitalize the first letter of each word. So I just hit enter, which is going to um, save that script there. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this color script um, and we're going to drag it. We can't, this script isn't going to activate. It's not going to do anything unless it's attached to something in our scene, right? And quite honestly, with this script and the way that I'm going to use it, I could attach it to anything. I could attach it to the main camera if I wanted to. Uh, because of how I'm going to code it. But to make things just make a little more sense, I'm actually going to drag this. I'm going to attach it to the plane. So I'm going to drag it until I see the little blue highlights, and I'm going to drop it on the plane. If I click on blue plane, and we go over here and we take a look at the right, you'll notice that we have my color script right here. Now, we don't see anything related to the script, but it is attached to our object. So essentially, when we run this, this script will try to run. Okay, again, there's nothing in the script, so nothing's happening yet, but it is trying to call its start method and its update method. Okay, so now that we have created our script, we've attached it to an object, let's go ahead and open it up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go down here and we're going to double click on the script and it should open up in the IDE that you have installed on your computer. Mine is going to be Visual Studio. So you can see opening up Visual Studio and great, okay. We now have our script open. First of all, I want to mention that this void start method is a method that is built into mono behavior. And you'll notice that we are automatically creating a public class that's the name of our script, my color script, and it's going to inherit from mono behavior. So we're going to be able to use any of the methods that are already in the mono behavior class, which is generally you want to leave that for now. Uh, I do want to mention if you're new to coding and and or Unity, uh, once you name your script, don't change the name of it unless you know what you're doing. Uh, you actually have to change the name of the script, the document itself, and you have to change the name in your class as well. They have to be the same. So if you're having issues, uh, you know, with your scripts not compiling correctly and you can't figure it out and you've changed the name of them, that's probably the issue. Sometimes for new coders, it's easier if you just create a script and you mess it up just to delete it. Maybe copy and paste certain important things, but delete it and then create a new one and it'll kind of reset for you. Okay. Um, so inside of our script, in this void start, you'll notice that we have a little comment here. This is going to be called in the very first frame update, okay? And then the void update, this is going to be called once per frame. So we could obviously use these if we wanted to, uh, but we're actually not going to be using these in this video. So I'm just going to leave that out. And by the way, I am going to put um, a copy of this code on my website and I will put a link to where that is in the description of this video here on YouTube. So if you do want to take a look at this code, it's going to be pretty simple, but um, you can go ahead and access that. So we do need a couple of variables. First of all, we need access to our plane object because that's what we're going to change the color of. And then we're going to need access to the actual renderer uh, component on that plane. So I'm going to declare both of these variables up here at the top. So we're going to have a public game object and making this game object public, I will actually be able to see it here in Unity in my inspector when I click on the object that it's attached to. So we're going to be declaring our game object uh, and then we're also going to declare a private mesh renderer because as I mentioned earlier, that is actually the component that we need to access to change the color of our plane. So we have a private mesh renderer and we're just gonna call it my renderer. Okay, so we have these two variables that we're going, that we're declaring and I'm just going to save my code for now. Um, I can hit the debug if I wanna, it needs to build the first time. So I just wanna make sure that it's building, so great. Um, so now if we go into our scene and we hit play, You'll notice clicking the button, nothing, still nothing happening, right? We've just declared variables. I just want to make sure that this uh, script is compiled and added to our project. Um, but now if we go over and we click on the plane, you'll notice that where we have the script listed in our inspector, we now have a place that's looking for plane and it says that there's nothing here. Now I could obviously, there's different things I could use in the code. I don't actually have to declare this plane because we've attached the script to it. I could just say, you know, the game object that this script is attached to, but I did want to show you how we use inspector to add items. So in order to tell this script what the plane is that we're talking about when we declare it, we actually need to go over here into our hierarchy. We need to find the plane that we're talking about. 
and drag it into this plane field. So now, when we go over to our script here in Visual Studio, when we say um, we have this public game object plane, our script knows what we're talking about. We're talking about this blue plane that we just dragged over from our scene. Okay. Now, because the mesh renderer is private, we don't see that in the inspector and we can't change it in the inspector. You can only change public variables in the inspector. I could go in here into my code and I could make this a serialized field, which I believe then, once it kind of re-compiles here, click on blue plane, we will see that field in our script, uh, but I don't believe we can change it because it's private, but it is a serialized field. Okay, we can't change it from there. Okay, um, and definitely no other classes will be able to, to access this variable. So if you want other classes, other scripts to be able to access a variable, it definitely needs to be public, right? Uh, we don't need that in our inspector view though, so I'm not going to keep it as a serialized field. So we have our objects declared. Now we need to create a method so what do we want to do, right? Well, we want to click a button, and when we click the button, we want the mesh renderer to change the color of our plane. So let's go down here. So we want this to be, we'll create a private, say private void, which means we're returning nothing, right? We're not returning anything back. And uh, we need to give it a name, right? So we need to call this one, we just call this on, on click color, right? So we're going to change the color, on click, change color even to be more descriptive. And then we need to open some brackets down here at the bottom. And now we're ready to code. So we want to call this method when we click on our button. And what this method is, is it's going to change the color of the mesh renderer. So first of all, we need to tell Unity where our renderer is, right? So our renderer is on our plane. We already have declared our renderer. It's called my renderer. So let's start with that. We're going to say my renderer, right? We say, what is my renderer equal to? Well, it's equal to the plane that we've declared up here and that we've already shown Unity where our plane is when we dragged it in in our inspector, right? So my render is equal to the plane. We need to get a component of that plane, right? So it's plane.get component. And the component that we want to get is the mesh renderer, right? So there's our mesh renderer. And then we just need to finish this off with our method close it. So now we have gotten a connection to the mesh renderer, but we need to change the color, right? And I'm not really, I'm just going to basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable and disable. I'm going to make our plane disappear when I click this button. And then when I click it again, it's going to turn back to blue. So in order to do that, I need to say that when I click this button, I'm going to change the enabled state of my renderer. So I'm going to find my renderer. And I'm going to say dot enabled, right? Is it active in my in my hierarchy. So what that means is, let's just take a step back here for a second of the code, because I do want to show you what's happening. When we go to our plane, we've got our blue plane. Over here in the inspector, where it says blue plane at the top, if I click on this checkbox, this is making it active, not active, active, not active. So my script is going to do exactly that, right? So we'll go back over here to Visual Studio, bring up our script. So my renderer, when I click this button, I want my renderer dot enabled. Well, I basically want it to, to be the opposite, right? That That's it. Yeah, I just want it to be the opposite. That's pretty easy. My renderer dot enabled equals the opposite of my renderer dot enabled. Great. So this is actually our code. I'm pretty sure that this is correct. Uh, but I do want to show you a couple things. So first of all, let's go. I saved it. I've already saved it. Let's go to Unity. And I want to show you things how I would kind of look at things step by step. So let's hit play. So we hit play clicking our button, still nothing happens. Why does anything happen? Oh, you know, we haven't connected our script to this button yet. I happen to know that that's the reason. But the next thing that I would do is I would say, man, you know, why isn't that, why isn't that working? Let's go back into Visual Studio and let's say, well, I want to make sure that this script is, is actually running. Is there something wrong with the script? So I'm going to actually go back in here. and I'm going to recreate that start method. So I'm going to say uh, private, you know, uh, start should finish it for me. There you go. Private void start. And I want to say on start, I just want to know if it's if it's getting to the script or not. So we're going to write to our console. So I'm going to say debug.log. And as I mentioned earlier in the course, this is a built-in Unity me uh, method into mono behavior. And this 
guys, you've got to use this all the time. You have to use debug.log or you have to be doing it. You have to be debugging and sending yourself messages some way. You can send yourself pop-up messages if you want, but like debug.log is here. So you've got to use it. So if you're going to get anything out of this video, if you're new to Unity, new to coding, learn debug.log. That is going to be the most important thing you're going to learn. So debug.log um, basically is a method that takes a string and it can take other parameters as well. Uh, but for the, the purpose of this is we're just going to say we made it here. So notice that I put my string in the parentheses, I have it closed off, and this is going to be called on the start frames, so the very first frame that this object is active, that the object that this script is attached to is active. So I'm going to hit Command S, save my script, go back over here into Unity, hit play, it takes a second to compile sometimes, and you'll notice that down here at the very bottom left, I have this little message saying, we made it here. If I click to open it up, here's my console, and here's my debug.log. Okay, we made it here, great. So my script is working, right? But we're just not, we haven't attached it to the button yet, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this button and I'm just going to double click on the button. Actually, I don't have to double click on it. I don't have to see the button. I wanna see the inspector. So I have clicked on my button. And now I just need to make it so that when I click on this button, the script that I created is activated. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down in the inspector and you'll notice that in this button component that's automatically added to all buttons, we have this on click function method right here. So I'm going to click on the plus icon right here. And now I need to say when it's clicked, I want it to perform a function. Well, where is that function? So I need to tell it where that function is. So it needs an object. It needs an object that has the script that has my function on it. Well, my script is attached to the blue plane. So if I drag blue plane into this object field, you'll notice that this list is now selectable. So I can click on the drop down list and now I need to find my method. So I can go down to my color script, which is the name of my script. And then I can find my method that I want to call, but we're not seeing it. And I happen to have an idea why I forgot that we were going to be calling this from a different object. When I created this method, I made it a private method, right? So I actually need to go back in here and I need to make this a public method and I need to save it. And now, this is great, I love when I you know, have something come up like this when we're doing a video because we can actually debug our own. So now, I have got still have my, uh, I don't, I have my, have my button selected. I go down, on click, blue plane's already selected, click on the drop down, go to my color script, and then we ha now have this method, on click change color. So we had to make that a public method. But there it is. Now, I'm pretty good to go, guys. So if I click on the play button, We've got our blue plane, click on the button. Oh, plane, no longer visible, visible, no longer. We've scripted our first object in Unity. Pretty simple, right guys? Just changing the color of an object. So that's, you know, that's kind of the basics of how we can get objects into Unity, uh, how we can create scripts for them, and then how we can actually go and code them and use our inspector to, uh, add the scripts to our objects and then make it so those scripts are functional. I do just want to leave you with a couple more uh, places for you to take a look at as you use Unity. Uh, so I want to mention that up here, if you click on the Unity drop down menu, you have your preferences section where you can manage a lot of your different uh, Unity preferences. So there's not too much in here. If you have a certain external tool that you use, your IDE, you can change it here. But you obviously want to look through here and if you're ever looking for something in particular, this is a good place to start. But there are a few different setting windows here. So I'm also going to go up to File, and I want to go to Build Settings. I want to talk about Build Settings and Build and Run. These are really important things for Unity because we've got this project we're creating. Okay, great, we can click the Play button to run it in Unity, but how do we actually run our project on a computer outside of Unity? Well, we have to build it, right? We have to compile it. So if I click on Build Settings, it popped up my other screen. Let me bring it over. Okay. So here's our build thing. So you can see we can choose which platform that we'd like to build for, and you can change these uh, as you'd like. That's one of the beautiful things about Unity. It's one of the greatest things about Unity. So I could build for Android. And I click on Android, and then I would click switch platform down here at the bottom. It would take maybe anywhere from 10 to 10 seconds to 40 seconds. And it would switch over my code so that it was connected to Android. And then I could build and run this project to show up on my Android device. In order to build a project, we need to tell Unity what scenes that we'd like to build into that project. And if I look up here at the top, I currently, I don't have any scenes in my build. So right now I'm not, I'm not building anything. I wouldn't build anything. So I'm just going to click on this add open scenes button. And then you'll notice that my one scene called sample scene, 
which we're not looking at, but it's there, has now been added to this project. So now once I switch this platform, I would be able to build and run. What am I? I'm on the, the PC Mac Linux standalone. So I could uh, click build and run. Actually, why don't we just do it since this shouldn't take this shouldn't take long at all. We'll just call this test. This should take like a second. Okay, so we've built it. Now we get to choose how we want to test it. So I'll test it in windowed mode just to make it a little bit easier. And we'll click play and you'll notice, hey, made with Unity. We've got this whole application. It's a standalone application, right? It's right here. This test application, click, boom. So now we're running this in Unity uh, in, on our Mac computer. If I wanted to run it on, you know, if I was on a Windows computer when I built this, it would build it for Windows. If I wanted to just embed it in a website, I can build WebGL, and then you can see all your different options. So you definitely need to remember to add scenes, though, uh, to your build when you add new scenes to your project. You can also click on Player Settings, which uh, this is essentially the same, I believe, as going up here to Edit and then clicking on project settings. Oh no, it's not the same, sorry about that. I, was, I, I wanted to show you project settings next, so now I've got them both pulled up. So um, the project settings, where you can look at things like physics in your project, you could uh, look at, this is why I thought they were the same, because you can go to graphics here in your project settings, and you can change the settings for each type of build that you build to. You can also change that over here in the player settings. So, um, there's not too much more in the in the project settings I want to show you right now, so I am going to close that. Uh, do know that that is there for you. But let's go back to the build settings, click on player settings one more time, uh, because I do want to show you that uh, you can change your resolution here. So um, right here you've got this drop that says supported aspect ratios. So we can see that the aspect ratios that we're trying to build for. I want to move to the WebGL. Uh, there it is. Because that's C for the WebGL, we can actually choose specifically our canvas width and height. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, that is where you can access all of those settings if you need it. This is also where you can name your project, put the version number, company name. So I hope you all found this video helpful. You should be able to find your way around Unity now, start doing some coding, start creating a project. Coding is all about learning, right? We're always, always learning, all of us are, so definitely search for some more tutorials. If you guys would like to hear something specific from me, let me know in the comment section below and I'll try and get that up for you. But hopefully you should be able to handle yourself in Unity now and follow along with those tutorials. Know where things are when people are saying, go to the hierarchy view, go to your project view, take a look in console. So if you found the video helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.